deploying AI solutions in your workflow? Is it something that you're looking into? We are doing two major kind of uh, application. One is the most obvious, is the one that everybody's using, visualization, right? So how do you ideate, you know, how do you kind of envision things? Now we're testing 3D model to 3D model, uh, kind of a network going into the 3D model and using the kind of database that is linked to that model. We want to use it a lot for uh, business development. It's a great way to kind of use our own information to kind of reproduce or adjust uh, different proposals for different aims. And then we also have a large amount of digital waste in a sense because we've been producing so much for so many years that it's almost like a gold mine waiting to be, to be kind of discovered and utilized. Today, we have Corinza Harris, Associate Principal and Director of Design Technologies at Morphosis Architects here in Los Angeles. Hello, Corinza. Hi, Jonathan. You have a long history of usage with CATIA. Could you talk a little bit about yourself and your background? When I graduated from UCLA uh, quite a few years ago, uh, I uh, went to work for Frank Gehry, and at the time he was using CATIA. It was really a shift in thinking completely in terms of how you approach design, uh, how you think about the parametricity between, between elements. The way Morphosis works, uh, it's a very kind of unique process, but there's like a rapid iteration, a lot of options. And so, uh, what we did is we brought uh, Katia to them. It was very much about uh, kind of being able to rapidly adapt to the ideas. Uh, and then from there, developing uh, the use of software, integrating it in the workflow uh, to up to today where we're using 3D experience. Could you speak about any other projects where you've used Katia recently? The Orange County Museum of Art, we used 3D experience for the colliding of the facade, uh, which was a terracotta tile. And prior to that, we did a couple of projects, one in Korea, where we developed also uh, all the facades in uh, 3D experience. So you're using Katia as a design tool, uh, but you cover all project phases. Uh, in a traditional construction project. Do you use the same model to evolve and does that model evolve throughout the different phases from design through construction? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for me, the, the essential way to use Katia is definitely to have this kind of evolution. You're trying to kind of compress uh, all these phases together. These terracotta tiles on the Orange County Museum, they are existing simultaneously as wireframe, uh, geometric like or coordinate points they're also surfaces they're also solids right because we have assemblies we have three-dimensionality of the world and so we need these models to address all these kind of variable representation that are then used in our process can you talk specifically about a project where both you and a contractor or subcontractor have been using Katia? to facilitate the delivery of that project. Uh, Zainer, which is also a US-based uh, kind of metal fabrication company. With them, we were really collaborating and it was a back and forth because we are initially kind of setting up the infrastructure, then we are uh, creating very simple surfaces or solids. And then with Zainer, we start to kind of feed into it uh, parametric information and create like a data stream between the two, the two entities. From one Katia geek to another, what is your favorite Katia command? If you have just one. I do have one, it's unroll. Unroll. Yes, I love it. And, and that's how we solve the problem of the Orange County Museum of Art, which uh, has a very geeky ge geometry uh, ideas. So it was really using Katia as, as an idea generator, as a like quick iteration, which is takes skills, right? Because it's a little bit more difficult to do that. But then it also kind of uh, pushed us in a direction that uh, is unique and uh, beautiful. <laughs> 